ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the next episode of the Way Above Par sessions brought to you by Three Below, where we bring you conversations with golfers, some recreational, some professional, but all with the commonality of having carved a niche for themselves off the golf course, either through passion projects or through their various businesses. Our guest today is Nikhil Mehra, the creative head of the fashion house Shantanu and Nikhil. Um, they made their start in the Indian fashion scene two decades ago and through constantly pushing their boundaries, exploring uh, new opportunities in the world of design, um, they have remained front runners in their field of business ever since they started. Uh, Nikhil is also an avid golfer and through his love for sport has found um, ways to amalgamate their business and sport on various occasions. Let's have a chat with him. Uh, hear about his views on the ever-evolving world of fashion, the growth of fashion within India, and about his relationship with golf. Nikhil, uh, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time out to have a chat with us today in the midst of this COVID situation. It's my pleasure, JJ. It's good to be here. Thank you. Nikhil, there's, uh, I mean, there's so much to talk about uh, what Shantanu and you have done with your brand. Uh, but I want to ask you, you know, there's always a certain amount of risk involved when you set out on a journey to create something so avant-garde, whether it's uh, the formation of the brand identity or your company or creation of, you know, each of your new collections. I want to know from the stage of them being mere ideas in your head, what are the checks and balances you tick off to try and ensure that you can monetize your creative work? Well, uh, you know, uh, firstly, it's a great question, and I've been asked this question many times. Uh, I, I, I think to answer this question, it requires a lot of time mm -hmm. because um, there are many moments in life that come together to weave them perfectly mm -hmm. uh, for this to happen. Now, one of the greatest and the most important things to have really is to have belief. You've got to believe that you're here in this world for a reason and not just to um, do things that you love, but do things that leave an impact in your own soul system mm -hmm. before you get appreciation from others. And the big why uh, do we exist is something that most of us cannot answer to probably this lifetime. But what my endeavor was to uh, constantly see from my young days in school in class seven, eight onwards to see why is this happening to me? Why is it that I'm not able to uh, adjust uh, well in class? Why is it that I don't understand math? So there were a lot of whys um, that I had to answer for myself. And even though my parents would you know, focus on teaching me or maybe getting me a tutor, I still wasn't able to get those answers. So why am I not capable of this? And then uh, I was able to um, look at the why nots, you know, and I was also able to look at some of those things that made me who I was. Um, and design was then, which I discovered at a very early age that design is a flavor, is a part of my life which happens naturally. I'm able to feel good about myself. Um, I'm able to contribute to people and their lives. Um, and that was my why. Um, and why not should I continue doing this? I got a lot of resistance because back in the 1990s, uh, while I was in school for people to even think of fashion was like, oh, this poor man is going to be, um, you know, carrying a bag around with a sketchbook and uh, we corporate guys are going to kill him, you know. What life is this poor guy going to have? That was the intent. That was how people used to think about design back then. And then came the belief system that I have this. What am I going to do with it? Am I just going to explore it and go with it or am I going to use it as the only tool for my existence? And I was very serious about that because I wasn't able to exist academically very well in school. 
but I was able to coexist beautifully with like-minded people who enjoyed design. And so when the two intents came in, uh, that's when the world started to come together because I had filtered in my head that I'm not going to be an accountant. I'm not going to be an engineer. I definitely not going to be a historian. I hate history. Um, I want to make an impact in people's lives positively for them to look good. Now, if, they f if they look good, they will feel good. And so then I started to attract a very interesting ecosystem around me. Uh, Shantanu for one, who is the business head of uh, our brand and really my mentor in many ways. Um, his life story was completely different from mine, but it started to come together as the idea of starting a new venture happened. I did need a business head and who better than Shantan who saw um, my creative skill to be an empowering moment in his life. Because of course, from the DNA, even he has a strong a creative DNA. All these things started to come together. And I realized in life, if you have the intent and you have the belief, then the world will start you know, putting itself together in a beautiful puzzle for you to do well. So, so you, so you had these ideas, you had the concept, you, you sort of, you knew what your purpose was, but there's still, there's still an element of, of, of risk of yeah. you know, going with the conviction of going through with that, knowing that it can put food on your table. So when you talk about fear, uh, JJ, um, you know, the pandemic is very clear about one thing that as humans, we are very fearful, right? Yeah. And it would be unfair for me to say that I'm not. But what I am is a risk taker, mm -hmm. which is completely different from fear. Risk comes with its own highs and its own lows. Yes. So the highs are that if I pull this off, it'll be one of the best things, right? And if I'm not able to pull it off, what's going to happen to me? That's when fear sits in. But my fear, when I knew that I want to do everything around my eco ecosystem of what I know, right? Because I'm not going to be a CA, now that would be a massive risk and they'll have a lot of fear around it. Because as humans, we have a tendency to be fearful of something we're not able to perform, right? Whether it is fearful of having a great relationship with the loved ones, whether being a father, uh, could I be a great father? So there's fear there as well. Um, so if you perform, and what I realized and I've learned over the years is that if you perform in the ecosystem of what you're here to do, then fear automatically is calculated. You would never end up doing something so crazy that may uh, uh, sort of sink the ship of your creative work because you're so involved in it. Even when you do it, there will be people who will appreciate it. So if you're coming from a good space of belief, then the outcome is always incredible. Great insight. Thank you for that answer, Nikhil. This to remove, to not, to not go into it with the fear, but to embrace the risk of, uh, Absolutely. of likelihood of yeah. Um, your, your, your creative work, do you see it as being primarily inspired by your Indian roots and catering to an international palette? Or do you recognize it uh, more as a cross-cultural product without any real boundaries? It's a, it's a great question. And this also has a story. Um, you know, JJ, we come from a country of storytelling, right? So <laughs> Indians have a natural uh, tact of telling you a story before they come to the outcome. Um, back in school, when I was in Los Angeles, um, every other day I was asked, where are you from? And I'd be, you know, like I'm from India. And they'd be like, so how do you speak such good English? And that became constant. I was always constantly reminded that I was not American. Neither did I ever want to be American. But... In all my conversations with people, uh, I was made to understand that I'm Indian mm -hmm. more than in, ever in India, yeah. right? We never ask an Indian, where are you from? Bhai, tu se? You'll ask him, tu se? Be like, which city you're from? But you're not going to ask him which country you're from. Um, many a times, I was even um, told by, by people, say, hey man, so at a party, Let's say, for example, we'll be talking to five, six people. I'd be talking to them. And to put me down, one of them would say, hey, so buddy, I think I've seen you working at 7-Eleven. Wasn't you the guy? 
So I said, no, but he saw me employ people like you there. So, you know, those were the moments that made me realize how Indian I am and how proud I am of my heritage and my culture and how proud am I to be a part of an ecosystem where there is actually not this kind of racism, you know? There is not a question on your identity. And that helped me to build my identity. And that reflected immediately in the clothes that I started to design. This story helped for the story of the Shantamne Kill contemporary Indian product, which has a global appeal, uh, resonates from. And uh, today we do clothes which are gender fluid. There is no, uh, who's the man and who's the woman? And this mainly came in because my mom, she was really the, the, the father in the family. And my father was so intuitive to her demands and to her desires that he let go of his business. He sold his business so that she could start something incredible. So the storytelling here uh, stems from childhood. That's really cool for, for an Indian man back then, which, uh, you know, India has been a patriarchal country for as long as we can remember. For him to have taken that stand and, and laid a, you know, carpet out for your mother to go and flourish says a lot. Yeah, truly. Anyway, moving away from, from your work for a second, you've always uh, been very involved in, uh, with sport as well from a young age. How did golf happen to you? Of all the sports that you could have picked up in India, how did it, how did it happen to be golf? So the golf story is also kind of interesting for me. Um, I, you know, Shantanu and I were thrown in the pool by my mother when we were four and a half years old. We eventually became Delhi State swimmers. Mm. So that was the outcome of when she threw us in the pool. In school, I wanted to bunk school. And Mr. Ardi Singh, who had come from Mayo College to be our principal, used to play golf. So a dear friend of mine who came in from Sinar in class 10, 10 or 11, class 11, he came in, Gaurav Bhagat, who's a fantastic entrepreneur today. Um, he and I uh, started playing golf just to bunk school. Eventually, the plan was if we're able to play nine holes with Ardi Singh in the morning, we're good. We get to play with the principal. He goes to school. We go see a movie. <laughs> and we did that successfully a couple of times, but it turned out that I loved the sport so much that I was bunking school and uh, Gaurav was taking me to Delhi Golf Club in the morning to, to, to practice and to play. You know, uh, some of the greatest names in golf from Sevi Ballesteros to Tiger Woods have also been the most creative ones on the golf course. You know, they see yeah. shots that the typical eye wouldn't see. Do you feel for someone like yourself that has the right side of your brain so active, because you're constantly ideating, reinventing, creating. You have a slight edge in the game over someone who doesn't have that side of their brain active. No, I, I think it's a fantastic uh, question. And for all the golfers out there, you know, we're so many times um, looking for a feel factor mm -hmm. to play golf. You know, like sometimes you're on the green, it's like, dude, I'm feeling it. I can see the hole this big. Um, and that's pure creativity. Really, when you're letting go of all your mechanisms, your technical bullshit, mm -hmm. and you're just playing with pure love mm -hmm. for the game. I have been in many, many instances where I have taken the golf club and thrown it out of the park. <laughs> I have been in many instances where I want to crack, break my clubs. Um, but what holds me back is the opportunity of looking at a club and thinking how I can play six, seven different ways. Yeah. You know, can I hold the club shorter or higher? Can I do a pocket to pocket swing, waist to waist or shoulder to shoulder? Mm -hmm. Find new ways. Um, and that's really helped me because um, if my game is not really going well anyways, why do I want to go back to basic and try to fix it when I learned it earlier on? I rather go and have fun with it, right? Um, and um, my my incredible coach, Nonita, has been such a um, she's been such an advocate for creativity in golf. You know, so she kind of ignited that uh, feeling in me, saying that you know, for you, golf should be an incredible sport because you don't see 13 clubs; you'll see 36 clubs. <laughs> and that kind of opened up my mind because I thought maybe golf needed more technical uh, support than creative, but now it turns out it's pure creativity. Mm -hmm.
and that's why I love the game so much. How about your involvement with cricket? Was it a business decision for a design house like Shantanu and Nikhil to associate uh, with the Mumbai Indians in the IPL, or did wanting to be part of it just come from your your passion for sport? So Shantanu and I, uh, since childhood, we've been you know we've been more sportsmen than anything else, and sport helped us to find a very strong discipline. Um, between winning and losing. In sport, even when you lose, you lose with dignity. Mumbai Indians uh, was a natural um, sort of connect for us because before Mumbai Indians, we had done a collection with Adidas. We were the third designers in the world to be associated to Adidas. And that happened because I one day ended up on the golf course with Andreas Gellner. He's the Adidas MD at that point. And we were talking about all things design and he had a lot of passion for design. Um, so he invited us to do to be a part of the group and uh, create a line um, for them, which of course launched in many stores in India, and it was such a great moment. But before that, we had already had cricketers walk the ramp for us um, in 2005, um, and post that we dressed up Serena Williams. So our love towards sportswear or fashion that had some sporty detail has always been a part of our ecosystem. All our clothes are also have a lot of asymmetrical lines. There's a lot of um, structure and drape, and it all comes from the discipline of sport, the right and the left part of the brain functioning together. So we've taken that always, and then we realize this is our DNA. This is our existence. Why don't we make the most of it? So when we got a call from uh, Mrs. Ambani's office, and she asked us to design the jersey, I, in fact, was going with an empty slate to her. Now, she doesn't know that. Possibly after this um, comes out, she'll probably know the truth. But I was crossing the ceiling to meet her, uh, to get to her office. And um, I looked at these beautiful vertical lines cutting across uh, the ceiling. And that was such an incredible space for Bombay. I'd never, and that just had just opened up. This is 10 years ago. Um, on my way, I used the bridge to be the real bridge between old Bombay and new Bombay, the old money and the new money, the connect between two worlds. And when I went there, I remember the Reliance uh, booklet, uh, the writing, the notepad was sitting there and the color of that was quite beautiful. It was sparkling through into my eyes. And I'm looking at her, I said, you know what, Mrs. Amani, I think I've just designed your jersey now. She wow. goes, so you mean you've not come with an idea? I said, no, I wanted to first meet you. Understand, what does IPL, your Mumbai Indians, mean to you? And that's where the design has to come from. So it was a beautiful mix of what she thought of cricket, what I thought of Mumbai, and I used the lines of the ceiling. I used the value of gold um, as the design which came on the shoulders. And that then Capsulate made the first jersey mm -hmm. for Mumbai oh, And this now has been 10 years we've been doing it every year. And no one knows, no one knows that your inspiration, no one knows yet that your inspiration came from the ceiling. Not yet. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, Nikhil, the, the world has become so much more seamless now uh, compared to what it was when you started out two decades ago. Do you feel for this reason you need to keep one finger on the pulse of what's happening with global trends, uh, seasonal colors, etc.? Or do you prefer to stay oblivious to what's going on in the outside world, allowing for your own creativity to not be influenced by anything other than just the ideas that you know are coming out of your head? Um, again, a fantastic question. And this question, uh, the answer I'm going to give you is going to help a lot of people to understand how they need to see uh, what influences them and how it affects them. Conversations at parties affects people. Food that we eat except, uh, affects our body. Thoughts that we have affects our optimization of how we want to work in life. Similarly, trends, as you say, that may come out from somewhere are coming out from someone's creativity. I am a big believer of not looking at what is happening in the world because that inevitably has to affect me one way or the other. The human mind is so powerful that it may stash an idea. Let's say we're looking at the animal print that you're wearing. It might stash that, that, that leopard and I'll stash it at the back. 
the cheetah, right? Mm -hmm. I'll I'll stash it at the back, but eventually it may come out as a brooch mm -hmm. or as a as a crest. I believe for us as a group, uh, and I tell this to all my my assistants and my head designer, is that you can look, but don't you know you can observe, mm -hmm. but don't overlook anything. Don't keep on thinking that this could be a part of your day. You need to know what you like and what you dislike. Mm -hmm. So even though I like your cheetah, but that's about it. I like the thought of a cheetah. But beyond that, I don't let the mind go because that will then reflect into an animal print in the next collection. Um, so international trends, no. India, in fact, for that matter, today the world, it's so funny that, that this is happening to us. Every country is isolated to be a nationalistic country today. Americans are Americans. Britishers have become British. The Irish are looking at being Irish. Parisians are now more Parisians than ever. And so are Indians. And so this is a great time to really look at how we can use inspiration around us from the incredible culture that we have and use those values to inculcate and design in everything that we do. Uh, and about the Indian fashion industry, you know, it's made giant leaps uh, since you started Shantru and Nikhil. Do you see this upward trend being something that will continue in the years to come? I'm asking this because the millennial generation, that's, that's the chunk of the spenders today, I'd have to say. Yes. Um, we have to agree, have become more conscious about things like sustainability, living within their means. Uh, and in general, I guess, I guess living with less grandeur when compared to the generation before them. Sure. Do you think this could hamper the growth of a business such as yours? Sure. Luckily for us, uh, ever since our inception, we have been considered to be the anti-trend designers. The reason why we are anti-trend is because we don't necessarily look at the bright colors of India, which have been uh, you know, used by our, our, our um, colleagues in, in the industry. We don't necessarily look at the heavy embroideries. We really have focused towards making a structure and a shape for Indian men. So we do a lot of clothes, uh, which are minimalistic. And we didn't know the market's driving itself there. We, we don't even know whether we were the catalyst to drive the market there. But because our intent was to be uh, making clothes for both men and women, which were stylish, and the personality would come out because they wore something nice as opposed to wearing something embroidered, mm -hmm. that was always our philosophy. And that turned out to be like the major um value for most of our clients now we have a lot of lot of millennials who come to us i in fact got kids who are graduating they wear our bandkalas and they wear our draped kurtas um for their graduation party and that itself is a statement of what india means to them even though indian men and women today the millennials want a global approach towards things that's fine but they could do that in music they could do that in their lifestyle. But as people, they have truly blossomed as Indians. And I'm so proud of that fact that they didn't have to go and ape to be an American or to be a Britisher by going to... They go as Indians to England and to America, but they are, stay as Indians and they come back as Indians. That kind of pride has finally come to India. It wasn't in our generation, JJ. We would be going to America and we'd come back and say, hey man, how you doing? Those days are gone. These guys are very much uh, in their own skin. They speak in Hindi with everyone. And that's such a proud moment. If you and I, back in the day, spoke in Hindi at a party, they'd be like, you know, this guy lives uh, in East Delhi or someplace. Yeah. But now it's normal. Hindi music is on, on the rise. You can always hear Hindi music at clubs. Um, so we were, on the, we were on the ball. Luckily, because we were anti-trend uh, designers. And I think this market of nationalistic pride, nationalistic design, which is contemporary and sustainable, by the way, JJ, is going to be the way forward for the entire world. The COVID has clearly given us that uh, example that you cannot mess around with nature. You rather use it carefully, make product which is sustainable, which is higher value, and then be able to bring it back and make better design out of it. So all that is going to happen. It's, it's trying to happen. And I think Indians are going to be in the forefront. And mind you, 
India as a country, when it came to textile, we were the most sustainable. And I'll tell you why. Because your mom, when you were born, your mom and my mom took clothes from their friends and made us wear that. They was passed on. Same goes with our sarees. The sarees are passed on. The old jewelry is passed on. And that doesn't happen anywhere else in the West. They always buy new because they have a sense of belonging to it. They have a sense of owning something. In India, we don't own anything. Everything is passed on. So we're a true sustainable uh, country in that sense. And for that reason, you feel that this millennial generation that is embracing the, the new India yeah. uh, will result in, in, in it not hampering your sort of business? Absolutely not. See, we are contemporary Indian designers. Uh, we are also now coming out with a ready-to-wear uh, brand after 20 years. Finally, uh, we're going to be opening, uh, well, the plan was to open many stores. We have two ready, one in uh, Saket and one in uh, Promenade in, in DLF. But unfortunately, because of the situation today, we're looking at a strong digital uh, presence, which was also definitely needed. So that's going to happen. But eventually, if you uh, look at India and you say, why is it that India doesn't have a Ralph Lauren mm -hmm. till now? We're not a stupid country. Mm -hmm. We're a smart country. How come we've not been able to give birth to a Ralph Lauren from India? Well, this is the time. So now if a designer is stepping out and wants to start work, do it now. Because now when you start 10 years from now, maybe even five years, you could be the next Ralph Lauren. We want to be the next Ralph Lauren, uh, Ralph Lauren for India. We know we can because Indians are now getting even more proud than ever before. This is a great opportunity for business. Nikhil, you've sort of touched on this um, uh, in various points in, in your answers thus far. But I want to ask you, you, so you've been the embodiment of so many kids that study fashion design right after school in the hope of one day making it to the platform that you find yourself currently at. And as, as tough an industry as it is to flourish in, um, where there's likely to be much more that try and fail versus those who actually make it. What advice would you give these young designers, um, you know, about the signals they should look out for and, and what things they should do to keep their creative juices flowing in order to give themselves the best chance? Not that they'll definitely succeed, but to give themselves the best chance. Again, they have to know, um, you know, when I started out, I gave myself a five-year plan. That went off the window. Then I gave myself another five-year plan. That went off the window as well. It took me 20 years to finally come close. And every year the plan started changing, right? Because you're not able to achieve your target and you're thinking you're going to, okay, I'll push it by another five years. I'll be a big designer in the next five years. That doesn't happen. So one of the most important things I learned is that perseverance. Secondly, what is it that you really want? from what you're doing. Mm -hmm. What do you really want? Do you want to be known as that guy, you see him at a party and you say, hey man, that's, that's JJ, man. That's, that's the cool guy who takes, you know, does interviews with all the celebrities and gets them to talk. Or do you want to make an impact that people, when they come on to this, you know, to open their laptops and they see you, they say, this guy has affected the way my daughter or my son is thinking about their career. That is far more valuable, right? So you need to know when you get into any business, whether it's fashion or not, what is the impact that you want to leave? And it should definitely not come from your insecurities. So if you're insecure about your appearance or if you're insecure about uh, not getting enough love at home, please don't start a business to get that love from outside, you know? Because then you need a lot of time to reach there. And by the time you reach there, you will end up loving yourself so much that you won't need that business to help you. So the intent has to be uh, a deeper intent. You need to know exactly why you're doing this. Why has God put you on this planet? And there's got to be a phenomenal reason why you're here. And you have the gift. So use that value and move on with perseverance. Mm. Going back to your love for sport for a second, Nikhil, you've, you've dabbled with, um, with gear for cricket. Have you considered doing anything uh, similar with golf? You know, uh, last year I was playing around with a, a bunch of enthusiastic golfers out of the country. And um, I went with the idea that I'm going to win this tournament. There were 15 of us, right? Everything was blazing. I was on fire. 
in my head at least on the breakfast table and thinking today is going to be the day man we're going to start this round i'm going to hit up uh, hopefully a five over no more than that i get to the course i hit 36 over okay now i never hit a score like that and everything changed for me on the second day of the second round when i was playing i thought of an idea to get into golf clothing for people like me who forget golf every now and then and then use the values of design and technical areas of golf and use them in clothes to make a collection it's my passion i'm going to do it jj at some point in my life but i got to tell you something is stopping me from getting into it because every time i want to get into it i i land myself uh, doing something else <laughs> um in the future when this collection comes out one thing is going to be sure it's going to come from a golfer who is a designer so when you wear those clothes the impact that you will have on your game will be as great as the impact you'll have with the peers wear seeing you wear those clothes very cool um nikhil my final question is is about this unprecedented situation we found ourselves in that's literally brought the entire world uh, to its knees what has this lockdown meant and done to you personally and and what changes would you like to see within humanity once we've ridden this out uh you know this pandemic or uh, the time spent at home has happened to make many changes in in my life uh an impact more than changes it's made impact changes happen when they just happen for a time but impact lasts forever and the impact has happened in spurts the first two weeks i had acute anxiety the thought of creating a brand over 20 years and losing it overnight that was the first bout of anxiety once acceptance came in that well, i'm not alone in this then a sense of rebirth happened and i have i took to meditation a lot of meditation and it's not a hard thing to do at all i realize it's the simplest damn thing and the universe is inside our nut i didn't know that i explored it it's beautiful then my belief has gone up on what is going to happen and i'm not saying what's going to happen to humanity what's going to happen to me and i say that if today this pandemic can make an impact on you him her then it's going to make an impact on humanity it's easy for us easy for us to expect that ab ye ho gaya na log badal jayenge nahi zaruri nahi hai ki log badlenge ab badle ho aur agar aap badle ho to ye duniya badlegi so i think that uh, it's made a massive impact on me and uh, i know that it's made a massive impact on people as well and that impact is going to make this into a new world so i'm really excited um i have been frustrated massively frustrated not being able to get out of my house and do things that i want to do and i was also at some point rearing to go and start creating right of the fear that i might forget what i was wanting to make but i am at i am at peace i am in surrender mode and i am enjoying every bit of it jj every bit of it that's fabulous to cuz most of the world is complaining about the situation we're stuck in it's nice to see you have a very different perspective on it um thank I'm you happy. it was is great chatting with you and and lovely to see that there's almost a spirituality to to your creativity and and to your business and it's not coming from just designing for a monetary gain there's a, you know it's a much greater sort of purpose that you've brought uh, onto the drawing table thank you thank you so much jj uh, ladies and gentlemen that was nikhil mera the creative head of the fashion house shantanu and nikhil giving us some great insight into his views on fashion the fashion industry his uh, love affair with different form of sport and though he will continue the chase of being below par on the golf course it's very apparent from everything that he's achieved over the last two decades through his work that off the course he's already way above par thanks nikhil have a good day thank you